I'm Dave. This is Darren. We're both in heating, ventilation, air conditioning, second year, Cambrian College. Uh, this video, first of all, is just for educational purposes. As you'll see, some things on this furnace are not exactly to code, but this is in a learning environment, so that's why they are the way that they are. Uh, what we're doing today is we're going to convert a natural gas furnace to propane. And just a couple of quick notes. As I was talking for educational reasons, you can see the shutoff valve for the propane line is actually maybe only about three and a half feet off the floor. When it should, it should be about five. Because if you ever had any problems with the furnace and had flame rollout, you wouldn't want to be reaching across a fire to be shutting off the gas. Uh, another code thing that is incorrect is the support on the piping. As you can see, it's fairly sloppy and there are different codes as to support spacing for pipe diameters. And the ductwork, uh, minimum code I believe is five feet of ductwork and return on the furnace, which we don't really have on this furnace. So the first thing we will be doing, as you can see, we have the two pipes. It's already piped for propane. Now the reason you would convert a furnace from natural gas to propane is perhaps it's an isolated area. You do not have natural gas available to you. So right now we have it piped for propane and we will be switching the components of the gas valve and the burner manifold for this. What we're going to do first is disconnect the components from the burner and it would be a helpful idea if you made a diagram of what color wires are going where to on the burner so you know where to put them back to after you complete your conversion. In this case I already have a diagram made so I'm going to go ahead and pull them off. Okay. Now the next step is I'm going to <coughs> disconnect the piping to this valve in order to ease my access of the three orifices and also to change the spring in the gas valve. I'm going to loosen this off. As you can see it was pretty loose already. making sure obviously the valve is shut so we don't have any gas escape while we're doing this. We have four bolts holding the manifold assembly on here. As you can see here, like I said, we are already set up for natural gas. The three orifices in this particular furnace are a number 43 orifice and Darren will show you in the code book a little more about the that. The reason for changing the orifices is because natural gas, which we're set up for, has a drill size of 43 and one cubic foot of natural gas, you'll get a thousand British thermal units or BTUs of heat. Now when you burn the same amount of propane, you're going to get 2500 BTUs of heat so you will actually be over firing your furnace which will stress the combustion chamber and if it breaks you have risk of carbon monoxide going throughout your house so we're going to change the orifice to a smaller diameter which will be 55 drill size just on another note you can see if you focus on the orifice how mangled some of them have become that's because people don't want to take the time to pull out a, the proper wrench size and they just use an adjustable wrench. These are made of brass with pipe threads to the manifold which, which will seal the fit and they are easily dentable as you can see if you don't take the time to use the proper wrench so we'll do that. Just set this down to show you. Here in this, we have the number 55 orifices that are required for the propane burn. I'll take one out here. If you have a close up and look at this here, you can see the physical size difference between the natural gas orifice and the propane orifice. Obviously, the propane orifice being much smaller due to its higher calorific value almost two and a half times that of natural gas. Now in your natural gas and propane installation code book, you do have a detailed chart 
the 43 natural gas, which we had previously installed, produces uh, BTU output of 20,265 BTU. Now, to match the same output for propane, we're going to have to go to a smaller drill size, which we can see here at 55,000, will produce 19,079 BTU, which is the closest we can get without overfiring the furnace. We can underfire it by a small margin of 10%, but you never ever want to overfire the furnace. One more small note on these orifices. You notice me maybe taking them out. They, they weren't that tight into the manifold. They don't need to be. We have two dissimilar metals, one being a brass orifice, and we have a steel manifold with pipe tapered threads on the orifice. They do not to, need to be killed in order to get in there and uh, have, achieve a good seal. So we're just gonna put the wrench on and just give it, a, tighten it up lightly. And that there should be good enough hand tight and maybe a half a turn, if that, and you achieve your seal. Now the next step in this conversion process is to swap out the spring, which will be under this So this is the adjustment screw. We're gonna have to take that completely out in order to get to the spring. Now that we have access to the spring, we can remove it with either a magnet or you can very gently use a flathead screwdriver. In this case, I'll be using a magnet. And there we have the spring. The reason for changing these springs, as you can see here in my right hand, this is the propane spring, which is longer than the natural gas spring here. And the reason for that is we're going to have to put more pressure on the diaphragm in order to get the 11 inches of water column that we need to run propane in this furnace. Your normal ga natural gas is only at three and a half inches water column. So we're going to go ahead and put that propane spring back in the hole that we just took the natural gas spring out of. It doesn't have to go tight because we will be adjusting it later with a manometer.